UFC, the world leader in MMA. Experience it on FS1. In the month of July, we saw six UFC events with five headliner upsets and three championship belts changing hands. Tomorrow night, the UFC machine rolls into August, and for the first time in promotional history, the Octagon will set down in Salt Lake City, Utah. And there are the stars of our main event, two of the most creative featherweights in the UFC, Yair Rodriguez and Alex Caceres. These streaking 145-pounders are looking to put on a show when they top the fight card for the first time tomorrow night. Also in the featherweight division, a couple of Ultimate Fighter alums, Dennis Bermudez and Honey Jason square off in our co-main event. The FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts right now. Tomorrow they fight, tonight they weigh in. Hello, everyone, and welcome into our Fox Sports studios in Los Angeles. I am Karen Bryant, alongside Kenny Florian and the middleweight champion of the world, Mr. Michael Bisping. Joining us for the first time is Laura Senko on location. And, Mike, if the rumors are true, you've got some exciting news for us about your next fight. I can neither confirm or deny that I'm fighting Dan Henderson on October 8th in Manchester, England. I can neither <laughs> confirm or deny, but I did get kneed in the face today, so I'm training for something. You are not seeing things, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I have a horn growing out of my oh face. My I got kneed in the face. It wasn't me. No, it wasn't me. Looking good, Mike. Kenny, we can confirm we've got an excellent main event tomorrow night. Yair Rodriguez, a per perfect 4 0 in the UFC, and Alex Caceres is 2 0 since moving back up. 145 pounds, so someone's streak is coming to an end. Well, I'm excited for this fight because we have two very exciting strikers going at it. And when you talk about Yair Rodriguez, you're talking about one of the most creative guys in the game right now. And if you had any doubts about his potential, that was on full display when he went out there and knocked out Andre Feely with that knockout right there, that double kick, just for a phenomenal count. Yeah, well, on the flip side, we've got Alex Caceres, Bruce, Bruce Leroy, pardon me. This guy's totally unpredictable, just like his opponent. He goes out there and he lays it all on the line. Flying kicks, spinning attacks, knees, elbows. He's also got five submission victories. In his last fight there, he took on Cole Miller on 10 days' notice. So, always prepared, always in shape. Excellent submission ability. This really has all the, uh, the ability for a massively action-packed main event. Yeah, and obviously we're going to break down that fight. But, Michael, in our co-main event, a couple of guys who can actually get it done via submission or knockouts, why don't you set us up on Hani Jason and Dennis Bermudez? Yeah, Dennis Bermudez was the uh, the, the runner-up on Ultimate Fighter Season 14. And this is a guy that's always in exciting fights. He goes out there, lays it all on the line, very powerful striker, likes to put himself in the danger zone sometimes, but he backs it up with big power and amazing wrestling. On the flip side, Hani Jason, black belt in jiu-jitsu, tough Brazil winner, and again, an explosive fighter going into this one. Dennis Bermudez is very, very confident. He says it isn't even going to be fighter tonight, it's going to be a performance of the night. So, confident words from Dennis Bermudez. I know you saw, spoke to him the other day on the UFC tonight, and he's fired up. He's fired up. I couldn't break his record, but uh, <laughs> he's ready to fight. Yeah. Uh, we'll remind people what record that is a little bit <laughs> later on, folks. Uh, that was, it was actually crazy. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> you'll uh, see. Yeah, you'll see. You will see, you'll my see. friend. Uh, listen, folks, our table is set. We are going to go out to Salt Lake City and uh, send it down to John Annick. Salt Lake City, for the very first time hosting this event, we do have some locals on there. Court McGee, look for him as he weighs in. That'll be a good one. But let's go now to John Annick standing by in Salt Lake City. He's on the mic. Take it away, John, and make things official. Eric! <laughs> Great to be here in Utah for the first time. Have a hand for the Octagon girls, Chrissy and Chamalet, the greatest talent relations team in the world, folks. Joe Silva, Sean Shelby, and the greatest living American, Brian Stan, is with us as well. All right, let's get things going. We begin with the UFC Fight Pass prelims. First up, the Joe Silva special heavyweight opener, Chase the Vanilla Gorilla Sherman versus Justin Ledette. Making his UFC debut, Justin Ledette enters the octagon with a perfect record of 6-0. Now, despite the fact that four of his victories have come via submission, Ledette makes no bones about the fact that he strongly favors pure boxing, and he's looking forward to having a three-round war where he can showcase just how dominant a boxer can be. 234 and a half for Justin Ledette. And also making his UFC debut, Chase. Sherman. 
Making his UFC debut, Chase Sherman is a 9-1 heavyweight who has yet to make it out of the first round in all nine of his victories. The former college football player is obviously a well-rounded fighter as he trains with none other than former middleweight contender, Alan Belcher. 245.0. 245 for Chase Sherman. All right, now we get to our featured UFC Fight Pass prelim. It is in the featherweight division. Cub Swanson versus Tatsuya, the crusher Kawajiri. When Tatsuya Kawajiri got into the UFC, he was one of the top lighterweight fighters in the world. And while he hasn't had the same success in the UFC as he's had in Japan, his style is still a difficult one for everyone in that division. He's a very strong wrestler who also has big time knockout power. One forty-five and a half, the official weight for Tatsuya Kawachiri. And his opponent currently ranked number five in the world, Killer Cub, Cub Swanson. I spoke to Cub Swanson yesterday and he told me that although he's a featherweight contender and he's been around for a long, long time, he's not stressing himself out trying to get that title shot. Right now he's just enjoying being a fighter and enjoying training in the gym. He's learned with age and experience to slow down a little in the gym and train a little bit smarter and he said if the title shot comes, it comes. And now we get to the FS1. Welcome back to the LA studios. You can catch the next four fights on FS1, the exclusive home of the UFC. The FS1 prelims start with featherweights. Teruto Ishihara versus Horatio Gutierrez. Ken Flo, take us away with Gutierrez. All right, Gutierrez is the Gutierrez. ultimate fighter, Latin America season two competitor and uh, is best known for his Muay Thai. In fact, his coach from that season, Efren Escudero, has been a big mentor for him getting ready for this particular fight. He's been going with his coach from Chicago Fight Team to be with Escudero and train under John Crouch. 146 for Horacio Gutierrez. Over at the MMA lab in Glendale, and Arizona. his opponent, Teruto Ishihara. A KO artist with seven of his nine victories coming via knockout, six in the first round. Teruto Ishihara has his eyes set on victory. Victory with the ladies, that is. He says his biggest motivation in having a good performance is to, quote, get more girls. 146 even. 146, the official weight for Ishihara. He said he yeah. wants to get more girls and more chains. And more chains. Two yeah. chains. He's got two chains. Two chains. <laughs> All right, our next prelim is in the lightweight division. David Tamer versus Jason Pepsi Novelli. First fighter to the scale, making his UFC debut. Please welcome Jason Novelli. Well, I'm not sure why they call him Pepsi, but Jason Novella is making his UFC debut here. He's unbeaten in his last five fights. He's got 11 years professional MMA experience, six wins by submission, and finished four opponents inside the first round. So definitely the potential for a great addition to the UFC roster. 155.5. 155 and a hook for Jason Novelli. And his opponent, David Tamer. The Swede, David Tamer, right there. You see the Swedish flag wrapped around his neck. Was a competitor on season 22 of The Ultimate Fighter, where he was coached by the notorious one, Conor McGregor. He's a Muay Thai champion who followed in his brother's footsteps, training in Muay Thai back in 2004. Showed off his excellent striking in his last fight. The stoppage went over Martin Spenson. Did it in round one, very impressive. Was he showing off the Reebok, making sure he knew everybody knew he was wearing the right gear underneath? <laughs> what was that? 155 even. 155, the official weight for David Tamer. 
Well, I know the Reebok officials are very on top of the game. Yes. Believe you me, prior to fighting Luke Rockle, they came into my dressing room five times to make sure I had on Reebok underwear. It's true. Ooh, I like oh. it. I like it. Here we go. Spicing things up a Joe little bit. Joe Silva needs to get Joe. in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe Silva's giving up the rear naked choke, yeah, though. Yeah. He's got a face as a pony. Yeah, what yeah. is he doing? All right. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I like it. All right, moving on now to the heavyweight division. Victor Pesta versus Marchi Tibora. Marcin Tiberi is looking for redemption in this his second UFC outing after dropping a decision in his debut in April. For this camp, he brought in a new striking coach, former world champion kickboxer Robert Zolkowski. He says we can look forward to seeing much improved striking. Today for Marcin Tibora and his opponent, please welcome Victor Pesta. Victor Pesta is the first guy to fight in the UFC from the Czech Republic, so a lot of pressure on this man here. He's finished six opponents in the first round, four wins by KO, and has a 70% finishing rate. Also calls himself the takedown machine, so expect some wrestling from this guy. 239.5. And a little and a <laughs> chest half flex Victor there. Pesta. Why not? <laughs> we can make this one's for the ladies. <laughs> Not that I'm saying Joel Silva's small, but they're big guys. All right, now we get to our featured prelim, and it's in the welterweight division. Court the Crusher McGee versus Dominique Nonstop Action Pack Steel. Hailing from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hailing from Cincinnati, Ohio, Dominique Steele has heavy hands excellent cardio and a willingness to throw caution to the wind. He has earned back-to-back -back performance of the night and fight of the night bonuses. The previous was earned in a KO slam of Dong Young Kim. Quite the showman as well. Yeah. I thought he was going to jump onto the scale. 71, the official weight for Dom Steele. Non-stop, action-packed, <laughs> screaming. His opponent, let's hear it, folks, for the Utah native, Court McGee. There is the Ultimate Fighter Season 11 winner and uh, a guy who certainly has seen his ups and downs in life and both in his UFC career as well. 169.5. Makes the weight and right and there. Court was you. clinically dead after a drug over overdose. He had to relearn how to talk, walk, and function again. But he's been clean since 2006 and uses his story to inspire and help others. Welcome back to our desk here at the Fox Studios. We're ready to weigh in the fighters on the six-fight main card, which, of course, you can see on FS1 Saturday night. First up, in the women's strawweight division, Marina Morose versus Danielle Taylor. Ken Flo, tell us about Taylor. All right, well, she is making her UFC debut. Fighter here. Very exciting striker. She has three knockout wins, and she has avenged her lone loss of her career. Definitely looking to make play spoiler against Moroz. 115.5. 115 and a half the official weight for Danielle Taylor. First fight in the UFC, of course. A lot of pressure. A very tough opponent to deal with. Absolutely. All right, well, Marina Moroz, like you said, the tough pressure. She came on the scene with a first round submission of the highly regarded Ultimate Fighter contestant Joanne Jojo Calderwood. And she stayed, guys, in the defense, fought Valerie Letourneau. Next, that fight didn't go her way, but she is 2 and 1 in the UFC. She was supposed to face Justine Keish. 115 for Iron Lady. But as we mentioned, she'll get Danielle in instead. And uh, she's a finisher, guys. Only one of her wins has gone to a decision. The rest of her fights did not go to the belt. This is going to be an exciting Oh, yeah. No doubt. Starways always deliver. All right, our next bout is in the middleweight division. Trevor Hot Sauce Smith versus Capo Joe Gelati. Joe Capo Gigliotti has yet to taste defeat in MMA. He brings with him to the Octagon a perfect record of seven wins, zero losses, four of which came in the first round. Now, whether it's standing or on the mat, fans can absolutely expect a finish. Capo has yet to leave it in the hands of the judges. 185 and a half, the official weight for the newcomer Joe Gelati and his opponent, Trevor Smith. 
Trevor Smith is another guy that's returning to the octagon after a significant layoff. This is his first fight since July 2015, where he had to take some time off due to a hand injury. 13 and 6 overall, 3 and 3 in the UFC. Strike Force experience on there as well. 35 years old with a wrestling background. 185 and a half for Trevor Smith. Next up, we go to the welterweight division. Santiago Chanchiboa Ponzinibbio versus Zach Cummings. About a month ago, Glory MMA and fitness product Zach Cummings got a call from Tyron Woodley asking if Zach would come help him prepare for a championship fight with Robbie Lawler. Now Cummings' crafty southpaw striking, solid wrestling base, and new BJJ black belt must have been a good look for the new welterweight champ. One seventy-one, the official weight for Zach Cummings, and his opponent. Please welcome Santiago Ponzinibbio. Well, Argentina and Brazil have a long rivalry in the soccer world, but it didn't stop Santiago from moving to Brazil to pursue his passion for mixed martial arts. He lived in Brazil and worked such jobs such as doorman, cook, masseuse, book salesman to pay for his Brazilian jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts training. And although his nickname Genshi Boa means nice guy or good people. Expect an aggressive and tough Pontinibio tomorrow night. Yeah, Pontinibio is always fun to watch. Big power, aggressive striking. 171, the official weight for Jet Chivoa. A feature bout in the middleweight division. Talish Latis versus Chris Kamosi. Factory X Muay Thai standout Chris Kamosi looks to extend his win streak to four. Hitting his stride like never before, this veteran of over 30 fights has been delivering violence in victory as of late. What's more impressive, Kamosi has never been knocked out. 186 for the veteran Chris Kamosi. Quite a good comeback story and for Kamosi. Yeah, going on a skid to come back and do so well. Yeah, you've got to admire, you know, a fighter that latest. continues to refuse to be put away, you know? Well, and this guy, Tally's Lighters, I know this guy very well. I fought him last year in Scotland. He fought Anderson Silva back in the day, shortly after that got cut from the organization. But like Chris Kamosi, fought his way back. Went on a five-fight win streak until he bumped into me, unfortunately. <laughs> but this guy is no joke. He's a big, strong middleweight. Heavy hands. Hold on for the weight. 186. And let me tell you, this guy hits Willis. hard. Yeah. He hits hard because he hit me a couple of times. Excellent jiu-jitsu, world-class jiu-jitsu as well. So, interesting match here. Nice guy as well. Yeah, very good. All nice. class. All right, now we get to the co-main event in the UFC featherweight division. Dennis the Menace Bermudez versus Honey Chasen. Well, there's Honey Chasen with that Jason mask, of course, from Friday the 13th. And uh, this guy says he still hasn't shown 60% of his skills in the octagon. Honey actually left law school halfway through so he could focus on mixed martial arts. And love that mask. Yeah. I was Googling Honey Jason and I couldn't find Honey Jason. The official so Jason isn't in is there. No. He's obsessed with the horror movie. Well, I was there in Bella when the, for the Ultimate the Fire world. Fidelity, and that Dennis was such a big deal. He wasn't sure he was going to get to wear the mask and didn't get to wear the mask, the whole thing. But uh, but that's his identity there in the fight. In the fight yeah, well, this guy, Bermudez, is lacking in no confidence. If you ask him about Honey Jason, he says, Honey Jason is a slow Brazilian and he feels that his dad is faster than him. Oh! Yeah, he's, he's dad wow, is faster than him. Mr. Bermudez has got... No. He, he, he's, he's, I didn't see him on the I didn't see him, though. Is he on the court somewhere? Hey, Dennis Bermudez is dad. <laughs> yeah, he's been uh, the talking up a storm this week. He's full of confidence. He says it isn't going to be fight of the night. It's going to be a performance of the night because it ain't going to be close. But he's taking in every moment there with his little GoPro, um, <laughs> it looks like. 
Taking a selfie. Just use your phone, Just bro. One minute, one. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, it really does. He's got the tripod and everything. Oh, no, bro. Oh, wow. wow. Pack it in, guys. <laughs> Hashtag technology. Like that. that is well, not selling a fight, ladies and gentlemen. Take a closer <laughs> look at the men on the poster, the two gentlemen who will share the octagon in tomorrow night's featherweight main event. Take a look. My fifth fight in the UFC is going to be the first one that I'm going to be the headline. And I feel like, like part of my dream is becoming true. I'm looking to be the champion of the world. Being the main event is not so much exciting for me as having my first five round fight because I like to test my mettle. I really like to fight opponents like Yahir Rodriguez because we match up so similar into our styles that it's going to have to be a scrap. Expect the unexpected. Uh, in this game, is no rules. I like to take risks. Oh! You hear likes to fly around the cage and do crazy kicks and do things that new people would normally do. And I'm unpredictable. I don't know what I'm doing until I do it. We're, we're very creative. We don't let the, the standard frame of fighting box us in. It feels good to unleash yourself. Oh! I know of what it takes to become a champion. I know it's gonna, it's gonna take a lot of work, but I think you're gonna get there. It's a personal journey of self-development and I truly want to see where I stand. After this fight, it's probably going to take me a one more fight to get to the title track. I believe this fight has the potential to become fight of the night. The first one who throws the crazier stuff is going to be the one who wins. It's a dangerous fight for both of us, but at the same time, it's a very exciting and fun fight for the both of us. 25 minutes of high-flying, explosive martial arts. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a war. First fighter to the scale, Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres. Bruce, Bruce Leroy, absolutely flying onto the stage there, and kind of like he does in his fights, kind of likes to jump in the air like his opponent Yair Rodriguez. Happy to get happy to be in the main Caceres. event. This guy's all right, and as we know, always in shape. Chihuahua, as I said before, Mexico, took out Cole on ten days' notice. Rodriguez. There's El Pantera. <laughs> the Panther, one of the most exciting fighters to watch in the UFC right now, as I said earlier, and at 23 years old, the sky is the limit. Type one build, black belt, and you'll definitely see that tomorrow night. Amazing kicks, very fast. Mm. 146, the official weight. So much Yair hype around this guy. Rodriguez. I know DC was talking about after the show how everybody wanted to sign this guy, have them yes. come to their gym and be a part of their team. All right, we step over here and talk to Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres, five years in the UFC, man. First headliner, got to feel pretty good. Yeah, it does. Um, I'm really excited for this five-round fight. It's uh, going to be a true test of my skills. Congratulations on the headlining opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Leroy, Alex Caceres. All right, and here he is, folks. Yaya Rodriguez, again, your first UFC main event. A lot of support for you here in the building. Got to feel pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty excited to be the headliner of this event right now. And thank you to all my, my friends and people, family, all of you guys, thank you for coming here. This is for you guys, I love you, I love you so much. All my cousins, my aunts, my mom is right around there, all my friends. I love you so much, guys, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, we look forward to watching you perform, folks. Yair Rodriguez! All right, that makes it official. Thank you all so much for coming out. We'll see you right back here for the fights tomorrow night. All right, thank you so much, John Anik. Welcome back to Los Angeles. Our main event, all smiles there, guys. What oh, yeah. are you